Welcome to Weight Loss and Wellness for Real, the podcast where people like you get the practical solutions and support you need to permanently lose the physical and mental weight so you can feel better and live the life you really want to live in the body and mind you really want to be living in. If you're looking to overcome your stress eating, overeating, binging behaviors, and move to a place of food and body freedom, as well as find more meaning and more moments of joy in life, you are in the right place. Hey everyone, thanks so much for tuning in today and listening to Weight Loss and Wellness for Real. I am your host, Heather Heinen, and today we're going to explore the very powerful connection between building resiliency and achieving your goals in weight loss, overall health, as well as athletic performance. So kind of whatever or wherever you're at in life, this episode is going to help you understand what resiliency is, why we want to build resiliency within ourselves and how that's going to affect or can affect uh, your physical health outcomes. So resiliency is not just about bouncing back from adversity. It's about building the strength to face life's inevitable challenges without losing momentum. So in this episode, I really just want to discuss why developing resilience is crucial, especially when stress is unavoidable. So we all have stress in lives, in our lives. A lot of times that stress we cannot change. We don't have control over. So building resiliency is what we can do sort of on the other side of the coin. We can really build this within ourselves to be able to handle those stressors without getting so stressed by still staying in peace and maintaining our health and well-being. I'm going to provide, as always, some really practical strategies and techniques to weave resiliency into your daily life, really ultimately, like I said, leading to better physical and mental and emotional health. First, I want to talk about the role of stress in our lives. We all face stressors, whether they're related to work, family, health, or personal goals. And sometimes these stressors are out of our control and trying to eliminate them entirely just is not realistic. That is just not real life. So instead, what we can control is how we respond to those stressors. And this is where resiliency comes in. Resiliency is our ability to adapt and recover from challenges. So whether that's mental, emotional, or physical challenges, resiliency is our ability to adapt and recover from those challenges. When we build resilience, we equip ourselves with the tools to navigate stress without derailing our progress in the meantime. So think of it as mental and emotional muscle building. Just like you work to build your physical muscles, resiliency is about building mental and emotional muscle building. It takes consistent effort, but the results are so worth it. So for example, imagine you're on a weight loss journey. You have a stressful day at work and your initial reaction is to comfort yourself with food. That's so many of us, right? It's a really common experience. But when we have enough resilience, when we build resilience, we can develop healthier coping mechanisms in those moments. So instead of reaching for the unhealthy snack, You know, maybe we go for a walk, maybe we practice deep breathing, or maybe we call a friend, or maybe we're just able to move through the urge so much easier. Over time, these really small resilient responses add up and help us stay on track with our weight loss goal. So let's talk about how building resiliency directly can support weight loss. The process of losing weight is not just a physical journey. This is not just calories in, calories out. This is not just, you know, exercising more, eating less. It's really a mental and emotional journey as well. So resiliency helps us stick to our goals, even when things get really, really tough. And one way to build resilience in this context is by setting very realistic flexible goals. I cannot overstate this enough. For example, instead of setting a very rigid goal to lose a certain amount of weight in a short period of time, focus on building sustainable habits like eating whole foods, maybe exercising or moving regularly and getting enough sleep. So 
when you hit a plateau or encounter a setback, your resiliency that you have already built helps you adjust and keep going rather than getting into defeat and giving up, which really gets us back into that cycle, that shame cycle of I can't do anything right. So just screw it mode. You know, I'm going to eat all the things, all that sort of stuff. Another practical strategy is to practice, you guessed it, mindfulness. When you're mindful, you become more aware of your thoughts and feelings, which allows you to catch negative patterns like stress eating before they spiral out of control. So mindfulness helps us stay present, reduces the chances of making impulsive decisions that could hinder our progress. I know I talk about mindfulness over and over and it's annoying, maybe, maybe not, but we have so much research behind this one skill that shows so many positive outcomes, not only with weight loss, but with resiliency across the board in our lives. So I'm going to continue to preach mindfulness until research shows something different. And it's also a tool that we can practice. It's practical. We can download an app and just follow along every day, three to five minutes as someone walks us through mindfulness meditation. So I also love it because it's so accessible. Resiliency also plays a role in how we view setbacks. So instead of seeing a slip up as a failure, resilient individuals really can see it as a learning opportunity. They don't ever flip into defeat. They just get into the space of, okay, yep, there was a misstep, a mistake. What am I going to take from that? What can I learn from that to make things easier, better, more effort? effortless the next time. And this mindset sh- can really make a significant difference in the long-term success. Beyond weight loss, practicing resiliency has numerous physical benefits. When we're resilient, our bodies are better equipped to handle stress, which can do- reduce the risk of stress-related illnesses like hypertension, heart disease, and digestive issues. Hey everyone, I'm really excited to tell you about BusyVantage, a company I have used for years and years and who I have recently partnered with in an ambassadorship for the podcast. This is one of the highest quality supplement companies out there. And the best part is I know the owner and his commitment to quality in his products. I actually interviewed the owner, Eric Hurst, on the podcast a while back, and you can hear him talk firsthand about his commitment to quality in his supplement company, as well as learn a ton about aging optimally and performing your best. That is episode 171 if you're interested. I think when people make the decision to maybe add some supplements into their daily habits, they don't think about how important it is to know and vet the companies you are buying from. There is no regulation on supplements. And so when you buy something, you really have no idea what you are getting. You really, really want to vet your companies heavily so that you know what you are spending your money on is exactly what you believe you are buying. So with Fizzy Vantage, you don't even have to think about it. That's why I've always loved this company and what you buy is the highest quality of what you can get. I use the Fizzy Vantage PowerPlex plant-based protein complex, and no, I am absolutely not plant-based, but I don't do well with dairy and whey protein. It causes some gut issues for me currently in my life. This is something I'm working on. But in the meantime, in order for me to get in my optimal daily protein amount for maintaining lean body mass, keeping my appetite in check, and for athletic performance, I have to supplement with a protein powder. And this is my absolute favorite. I alternate between vanilla and chocolate flavors. Both are delicious. This plant-based protein complex is really different than others out there in that it includes all the essential amino acids. So it's just like whey protein does, most plant-based protein powders do not. It also has creatine and beta alanine in it, huge, huge bonuses. Plus, Fizzy Vantage plant protein only has a few carbs in it, it, where most plant protein powders have lots and lots. So if you do, don't do well with whey protein, this, w- this would be an option for you. If you do do well with whey protein, then use their whey protein blend. That's also great, super high quality whey protein. Fizzy Vantage has lots of great products that you can check out, but the other one that I find so helpful for my goals and lifestyle is called Redux HP. And this is an all natural pain relief, which helps to improve recovery from rigorous exercise, 
supports a healthy inflammatory response and combats muscle breakdown, also improves perform performance, but the best is it is an all natural way to relieve aches, pains, and muscle soreness. This has saved me from popping ibuprofen for the couple of migraines I was getting twice a month, as well as when I had a big climbing or biking day and would wake up sore. If you don't know how bad things can get from popping ibuprofen, do a little research. Avoiding ibuprofen, in my opinion, is really, really important for health. So using this product instead can be a really great way to lessen pain naturally. You can get a discount on any Fizzy Vantage product by going to fizzyvantage.com. Fizzy Vantage is spelled P-H-Y-S-I-V-A-N-T-A-G-E. So kind of like physical advantage, Fizzy Vantage. And use my code, Heather Heinen, all one word. Heinen is spelled H-E-Y-N-E-N, no spaces, to save some money. I also have a link in the episode description below that you can just click on and uh, get that discount. Check it out. See all they have to offer. When we experience stress, our bodies react by entering a state which is commonly known as fight or flight. And this response is driven by the release of stress hormones like cortisol and adrenaline. And in the short term, these hormones can be really beneficial, helping us to respond quicker to danger. However, chronic stress can lead to a constant state of heightened alertness, which really takes a toll on the body and really culturally, this is what we are experiencing right now, where everybody has heightened anxiety. This really came into effect during and then after the pandemic. So many more people are in this chronic stress state, leading to this really, these these very negative physical effects on the body uh, and brain. So building resiliency really can help mitigate the effects of chronic stress. And studies show that resilient individuals have a more balanced stress response, meaning their bodies return to a state of calm more quickly after a stressful event. They don't stay in that chronic state. This quicker recovery time reduces the wear and tear on the body that chronic stress can cause. And over time, this leads to lower blood pressure, improved cardiovascular health, and a stronger immune system. Speaking of the immune system, let's delve a little deeper into how resiliency can keep us physically healthy. Chronic stress and weakened immune system often go hand in hand. So when we're constantly stressed, our bodies produce more cortisol, which can suppress the immune system's effectiveness. By the way, do you remember what happens when our body produces more cortisol? That's when insulin goes up, makes it very, very difficult to shed any weight, right? To access our fat stores, to release the fat stores. This makes us more susceptible to illnesses when our immune system is suppressed from anything, from the common cold to more serious infections. However, resilient people often have a stronger immune response, and this might be because they're better at managing stress, allowing their bodies to focus on healing and maintaining health rather than constantly dealing with a barrage of stress signals. So research has shown that people who practice resilience building techniques like mindfulness, exercise and social connection tend to have fewer illnesses and recover more quickly when they do get sick. Another physical benefit of building resiliency is its impact on physical fitness. So resilient individuals often have better exercise habits and higher levels of physical activity. And why? Because resiliency helps foster a growth mindset, which is crucial for sticking with a workout routine or a movement routine. So instead of getting discouraged by setbacks, resilient people are more likely to view challenges as opportunities to grow stronger. That is what we call that growth mindset. And this mindset doesn't just improve motivation, it also leads to better physical outcomes. So regular exercise is one of the best ways to build physical resiliency. It strengthens the cardiovascular system, boosts mental health, improves overall energy levels, plus exercise itself is a form of stress on the body. And by regularly engaging in physical activity, we are essentially training our bodies to handle stress more effectively. Now, one caveat here, because this has been, this was my life, and I work with a lot of women who have done this to themselves as well. This can go to the other extreme. Too much exercise, too much working out has the negative effect, right? Too much stress on our bodies. And now we're back into this chronic state of stress because of our 
exercise or workout routines that are just over the top. So remember, movement and exercise has to be in that sweet spot. It's that Goldilocks effect. And then, of course, I cannot not mention the role of sleep and physical resilience. High resilience is often linked to better sleep quality. And better sleep quality is linked to resilient individuals. People with more resilience are more likely to maintain healthy sleep habits, which in turn supports physical recovery and overall health. So adequate sleep allows the body to repair muscles. It consolidates our memory. So that really helps us not move into that brain fog that so many of us experience. Great sleep also regulates our hormones. So important. So all the processes are crucial for maintaining physical health and building resiliency. On the flip side, as I'm sure most of you know, poor sleep can lead to a host of physical problems, including weakened immunity, higher stress levels, and increased risk of chronic diseases. So building resiliency really helps protect against these issues by promoting better sleep hygiene and stress management. Okay, so real quick and practical, how can you start building your physical resiliency today as well as your mental and emotional resiliency? Here are a few tips. Incorporate regular movement. We'll aim for at least 30 minutes of moderate exercise or mo movement most days of the week. And honestly, this can be anything from brisk walking to weightlifting, really whatever you enjoy and therefore can stick with. A second one, yes, I'm saying it again, practice mindfulness. Really trying to build a habit of mindfulness can help so much. This could be techniques like deep breathing, meditation, yoga, all can help reduce stress and improve the body's stress response. Resiliency. Prioritizing sleep. Make sure you are getting enough quality sleep each night, not just quantity, but quality sleep each night. And um, there's lots of information out there on how to do that. I'm not going to go into that with this episode, but you know, one of the things, just creating a bedtime routine that helps you wind down and prepare for restful sleep. Another one, building strong social connections. We don't talk about this one enough, but it's so important. So having a support system can really enhance resiliency, spending time with friends and family, and also that one that we often forget, just not being afraid to seek help when you need it. And then another one we don't talk a lot about, adopting a growth mindset, really practicing a new way of thinking in order to get into the habit of thoughts of a growth mindset. So viewing challenges as opportunities to grow stronger, to learn both mentally and physically, this mindset is going to help you stay willing and resilient in the face of adversity. And building resiliency, it really is a journey, but is one that pays off in so many ways, mentally, emotionally, and physically. So by taking steps to strengthen your resiliency on a daily basis, you're not just preparing yourself to handle life's challenges. You're really investing in a healthier, stronger body. Okay. Thank you so much for joining me on this episode of Weight Loss and Wellness for Real. If you found anything helpful in this, I really ask that you just subscribe or share it with a friend, leave a review. And remember again, resiliency isn't just about bouncing back. It's about growing stronger with every challenge or stress you face. Until next time, stay strong and stay resilient. We will talk soon. Did you know you can find a lot more help from me on my website? Go to heatherheinen.com. Heinen is spelled H-E-Y-N-E-N. -E -N, and there you will find links to my online courses, how I work with clients one-on-one, -on -one, as well as online with my coaching and counseling services that I offer. The information in this podcast is intended to provide a broad understanding and knowledge of healthcare topics. This information is for educational purposes only and should not be considered complete and should not be used in place of advice from your physician or healthcare provider. We recommend you consult your physician or healthcare professional before beginning or altering your personal exercise, diet, or supplementation program.